this building is the former building of the Judenrat in the Lublin ghetto and it was also a building that was used for social services in the ghetto and for other forms of help such as the uh, orphanage which was uh, based here. When the Nazis occupied Lublin on the 19th of September 1939, there already existed a form of Judenrat, if you like, it was the, the Jewish community had uh, its own representatives and uh, the Nazis just used the same representatives to continue. So you had the head, it was a Hendrik Becker who was an engineer and uh, you had two uh, people who were uh, deputy heads, um, Marek Alton who uh, was a lawyer and uh, the other person had a sort of a stationary business that was quite a well known businessman in the town and these people were forced to continue doing what they'd done before. Now, uh, as far as Henrik Becker is concerned, everybody seems to have only positive things to say about him. Uh, whereas in the case of Marek Alton, it's a bit mixed. Um, I think with him, it's a case that he was an Austrian. Uh, he was he served in the Austrian army in the First World War, and he was decorated in the First World War. And I think that he thought he was just dealing with fellow Austrians, which most of the uh, Nazis here were in fact Austrians. But, that wasn't the way that they saw it, of course. They saw him as a Jew and nothing else. Now. So the, um, we have the minutes of the Judenrat session of the 30th of March 1942, uh, which met at around 2 in the afternoon, 1400. And then the Judenrat uh, was reduced from 24 members to 12 and those members uh, who were no longer in the Judenrat were to be evacuated immediately although the, uh, it was written uh, that Henrik Becker would continue to occupy a position of importance in where he was going. I don't think he was actually fooled because uh, when he went to the deportation train that evening he didn't take any luggage with him and uh, he had uh, some ritual clothing on presumably his, his prayer shawl, maybe after the lacteries, I don't know and he took that with him um, and maybe he was forced to do it or maybe he, he, he knew he was going, going, going to his death so there was no point in carrying a heavy suitcase there the um, Judenrat itself uh, when it was taken to the um, ghetto in Maidan Tatarsky, when all the inhabitants of here were forced there, that effectively was the end of it. Marek Alton and the chief of the police and um, one Shmuel Greyer, who was a businessman, I say that word very lightly because he was seen to be a a collaborator and a, a person previously before the war he'd been a, supposedly a barber but he had in fact run a, a brothel and he was one who became very wealthy out of the Nazi occupation that did him really good because he was shot uh, in Maidan Tatarsky on the 9th of November 1942. Same fate came to the children from the orphanage uh, here loaded onto trucks and they were actually shot just outside the town. <laughs>